जी नानी जी इट्स स्टोरी टाइम फाद वट विल यू टेल एस टूडे All right my curious bugs let me tell you the story of dantaras today Once upon a time devs and the asuras set themselves upon samundra mantan with the intention of churning the nectar of immortality the amrit out of the great ocean During this great event many invaluable divinities emerged from the great milky ocean Precious gems divine jewels and mystical flora and fauna emerged along with goddess lakshmi the goddess of wealth and fortune on dantaras emerged lord danvintri the divine medic with the amrit the nectar of immortality there ensued a long and tremendous battle between the devs and the asuras to gain the amrit ultimately devas with the assistance of vishnu emerged victorious the devs took the amrit with them to the swarglok or the heaven while the asuras were banished going to the patal lock or the hell till this day we celebrate dantiras to commemorate the emergence of lord danvantri and the amrit bye bye kids to hear more beautiful cultural tales subscribe to our channel namaste nani nani ji nani ji it's story time What will you tell us today? All right kids, today I will tell you about the second day of Diwali known as Nag Chaturdashi or Choti Diwali. Once upon a time in the mystical realm of ancient India, a demon named Nagasur had cast a dark shadow over the land whose actions terrorized both mortals and the heavens. He was born of the Bhumi Devi, the earth goddess. and had received a boon that he shall be undefeatable by any one other than his birth giver growing arrogant of his boons and powers nakasa started traumatizing the earth and the heaven plundering kingdoms captivating women and even overthrowing the king of swarg inda himself dethroned from his kingdom inda the master of heaven prayed to lord vishnu for assistance to end this tyranny vishnu taking the form of krishna battled against Nakasura. Aware of Nakasura's spoon, Krishna fought the battle serving as the charioteer to his wife Satyabhama, an avatar of the Bhumi Devi. Amidst the mighty battle, Nakasura attacked Lord Krishna, leaving him unconscious. Filled with righteous anger, Satyabhama retaliated with her bow and arrow, which proved to be the end of Nakasura and his reign of terror. As Nakasa lay on the brink of defeat, he humbly asked his mother Pudevi's avatar for a special blessing. He wished to be remembered with joy, not hatred, by the world. His mother, present in the form of Satyabhama, agreed to his request. She declared that the day of his demise should not be a day of mourning, but a day of celebration and joy. Thus, Nok Chaturdashi or Chhoti Diwali came to be celebrated to commemorate Lord Krishna's and Satyabhama's victory. Bye bye children. Subscribe to our channel Namaste Nani to hear more beautiful tales of culture. On a good summer evening. Kids giggle on the woven mat, eyes wide with anticipation to hear stories. Today children we will hear the story of the Lord Rama and the Golden Deer. Once upon a time in a glorious kingdom called Ayodhya lived a prince named Ram who was the son of King Dashrath and his wife Queen Kaushalya. But King Dashrath under the sway of one of his four wives Kakeyi ended up sending Ram away from the kingdom to spend 14 years as a forest dweller. His wife Sita and brother Lakshman accompanied him to an exile in the forest. One day a deer came into the same forest and Lord Ram's wife Sita caught sight of it. It wasn't any ordinary deer though. It shimmered with gold. Seeing that deer, Sita became very happy and she wanted to have that deer. Then Sita told her husband Ram that she liked the deer very much and wanted to get it. And so Lord Ram set off after the golden deer 
his bow and arrow slung across his back, leaving Sita in Lakshman's care. The deer led Ram deeper and deeper into the forest. He ran and ran, but the deer always stayed just out of reach. When Ram hit the deer with his arrow, he discovered that the golden deer was no ordinary creature. It was actually a powerful demon named Marich, disguised by the evil Ravan to trick Ram and Sita. Then, Marich also cried out in a voice that sounded just like Ram saying, Help! Lakshman! So, Lakshman set off after Ram, leaving Sita behind in their little hut. As soon as Lakshman left, Marisha disappeared. Now, with both Ram and Lakshman gone, Sita was all alone. This was just what Ravan had been waiting for. He transformed into a sadhu, a holy man, and approached Sita, pretending to be lost and in need of help. As soon as Sita stepped out to offer him food and water, Ravan revealed his true form and took her away to his island, the kingdom of Lanka. And so begin Ram's journey to Lanka, a journey that led to a great battle between good and evil, that with time featured one of the greatest wars our sagas have documented, the Ramayan and the slaying of Rawan. After many struggles, Ram finally defeated the ten-headed Rawan and rescued Sita. So remember kids, don't be fooled by shiny appearances, peel back the layers and understand the truth before taking a step. Before fulfilling every wish, we should understand its consequences. This tale is one that children all over the world have grown up with, and it teaches us valuable lessons about life and of the good versus evil. Bye bye kids. Subscribe to our channel Namaste Nani to hear more beautiful tales of culture. Naniji, Naniji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today, children, let me tell you about the story behind the great Indian festival, Diwali. Once, in the times we refer to, in our scriptures as the Trita Yug, there lived a just and kind king named Dashrath. He was blessed with many children from his three wives. But he particularly adored his crown prince, the eldest child and the son of Queen Koshalia, Ram. Dashrath's wife, Kakai, under the sway of one of her depraved helpers named Manthara, wished that instead of Ram, her son Bharat would take over the crown. Kakai had previously saved Dasharath in a battle against the Asurs and was promised two boons by Dashrath. In a bid to promote Bharat's interests, she ended up asking Dashrath to announce Bharat as the crown prince in place of Ram. She also asked Dashrath to exile Ram from the kingdom to spend 14 years as a forest dweller. Ram is regarded today as the embodiment of idealness. On learning of his father's turmoil, he volunteered to fulfill the promises his father had made and embarked on a 14-year-old journey. His wife, Sita, and brother, Lakshman, accompanied him onto an exile that would with time feature one of the greatest wars our sagas have documented, the Ramayan and the slaying of Ravan. Dashrath could not bear being separated from Ram and demised shortly after. Even Bharat could not stand the thought of overthrowing his brother from the kingdom. For the 14 years, when Ram was exiled, he served his duties, whilst maintaining and paying respects to Sri Ram's Padukas, kept symbolically on the throne of Ayodhya. Fourteen years passed, and Ram, having fought and slayed the great Ravan, came back to Ayodhya with Sita and Lakshman. The people and the royal palace of Ayodhya were overjoyed with their king coming back after a long separation. They illuminated and decorated the whole of Ayodhya with lamps and fragrances to welcome back their king 
and celebrate their victory. To this day, we celebrate Diwali to signify the victory of good and determined intent over evil intentions and to welcome Sri Ram into our hearts and lives. Bye-bye kids. Subscribe to our channel Namaste Nani to hear more beautiful tales of culture. On a good summer evening, kids giggle on the woven mat, eyes wide with anticipation to hear stories. Get ready little ones. Today I will tell you some interesting facts about Ayodhya Ram Mandir. Imagine a temple taller than trees and wider than rivers. This is what the Ayodhya Ram Mandir will represent, the largest temple in all of India. After approximately 500 years of anticipation, it is set to be inaugurated and open its doors on January 22, 2024. As per its design structure, the height of the temple would be approximately 161 feet, along with 28,000 square feet of area. Also, the manda is completely made up of stones. Instead of using iron or steel, elements like copper, white cement and wood are used. Special bricks with inscriptions such as Shri Ram are used in the construction process. Some of these bricks have not been utilized for over 30 years, referred to as Ram Shillas, adding a historical significance to their use in the temple's construction. The temple also has unique features in the design. The temple will be a double story, where the ground floor of the temple will depict the life events of Prabhu Sri Ram, the story of his childhood, and the first floor will depict the Ram Darbar. The authorities have also placed a time capsule 2,000 feet deep into the ground right below the temple. This time, capsule carries information about Lord Ram and Ayodhya, his place of birth in Sanskrit. It is called Kal Patra in Hindi. The main purpose of placing a time capsule is to protect the identity of the temple so that people don't forget it in the future. So kids, Ram Mandir is not just about the past, it's about the future. And like Lord Ram's message of love and kindness, it's a treasure to be shared, not just in the present, but across generations. So go out there, and when you do, remember the love, the devotion, the magic woven into every stone, and let the spirit of Ram guide you toward a brighter tomorrow. Naniji, Naniji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today, children, let me tell you about the story behind the Indian tradition of Bahai Duj. Bahai Duj is a special day that celebrates the bond between brothers and sisters. Bhai means brother, and Duj is the term used for Luna. There are two stories of brother-sister companionship that are believed to be the origin of this celebration. Remember how, in the story of Choti Diwali, Sri Krishan, along with his wife Satyabhama, defeated the Asur Nurkasur. On this day, after the battle with Nurkasur, Sri Krishan visited his sister Subhadra, who was overjoyed at seeing her brother. She happily welcomed her victorious brother with sweets and flowers. She expressed her joy by applying a tilak on his forehead, marking the start of a special celebration of the bond between a sister and a brother. Another story is linked with the son and daughter of Surya Dev, Yam and Yamuna. It's said that Yamuna had extended several invitations to her brother to visit her home. However, Yam could not answer the invite, despite many efforts from Yamuna. One wonderful day, Yam finally visited his sister's home. Overjoyed to see him, 
She warmly welcomed him. Yam, touched by her warmth, happily asked his sister if there was any special wish she wants to be fulfilled. Yamuna asked Yam that he visit her every year on this day, henceforth, and that on this day every year the sisters who place Tika on their brothers' foreheads and treat them with respect, their siblings will never be terrified of Yam. Yam remarked Tathastu to his sister's heartfelt wish. Since that day, Bhai Duj, also known as Yam Dwetia, has been celebrated to mark the eternal bond of love between brothers and sisters. Bye bye kids. Subscribe to our channel Namaste Nani to hear more beautiful tales of culture. One night when Nani was lighting a bonfire for Lohurdi in their veranda, kids wondered and asked, Nani ji, why do we celebrate Lohurdi? My sweet little bunches, today I will tell you why do we celebrate Lohri. In the sun-soaked land of Punjab lived a rebel named Dula Bhatti. He wasn't just any man, he always helped the poor and fought against the bad guys. Back then, greedy landlords called Zamindars treated the villagers unfairly. They took all their food and money, leaving everyone hungry and sad. Dula couldn't stand seeing this happen. So he gathered a band of brave friends and formed a secret group called the Robin Hoods of Punjab. One day, two sisters named Sundari and Mundari, the daughters of a poor farmer, were in danger. A mean Zamindar wanted them to marry him, even though they didn't love him. Scared and desperate, Sundari and Mundari's father ran to Dulla for help. Dulla, being super clever, came up with a brilliant plan. He dressed up as a singer and snuck into the Zamindar's grand wedding procession. With a wink and a whistle, he signalled his friends, and together they rescued Sundari and Mundri. They whisked the sisters away and helped them marry the kind and honest men they truly loved. News of Dullah's daring trick spread like wildfire, warming the hearts of everyone except the greedy Zamindar. And so, whenever people light bonfires and sing songs on Lodi, they remember Dullah, a symbol of hope, fighting for fairness and celebrating new beginnings just like the crackling flames of Lodi. So kids, the next time you hear the dhol drums beat at Lohri, remember Dulla Bhatti and spread kindness wherever you go. Bye bye kids. To hear more beautiful tales of culture, subscribe to our channel. Namaste Nani. On one fine morning of Vasant Panchami, kids worshipped Goddess Saraswati and then went to the rooftop to fly kites with their Nani. They asked, Nani ji, why do we celebrate Vasant Panchami? My sweet little bunches, once upon a time, the world was a quiet place. Everything existed, but nothing spoke. The birds couldn't sing, the wind couldn't whisper, and even the rivers flowed silently. This saddened the great creator, Lord Brahma. He felt the world needed something special, something magical, a voice. One beautiful spring morning, as the sun began to paint the sky with warm colors, Lord Brahma sprinkled drops of magical holy water on the earth. Suddenly, a magnificent lady appeared before him, dressed in white and holding a golden vena. This was Goddess Saraswati the embodiment of knowledge and music. Brahma told Saraswati of his sadness. The world is beautiful but silent. Can you bring it to life with your magical veena? Saraswati smiled and gently strummed the strings. As the sweet melody filled the air, something incredible happened. The birds chirped, the wind rustled the leaves and the rivers gurgled happily. 
the world was alive with sound. With each magical note, the creatures learned to speak. The animals found their voices, humans discovered the power of words, and the world bloomed with laughter, stories, and songs. Spring has truly arrived, not just in the weather, but in the hearts of all living things. From that day on, Vasant Panchami, the beginning of spring, became a day to celebrate Goddess Saraswati and her gift of voice. Vasant Panchami marks the beginning of spring, a season of new beginnings and fresh life. The days get longer, the weather gets warmer, and flowers start to bloom. People offer her yellow flowers, symbolizing knowledge and light, and wear yellow clothes to represent the warmth of spring. So kids, next time you hear the wind whistling, the birds singing, or your own voice speaking, remember the story of Vasant Panchmi and the magical Veena that filled the world with sound and joy. Bye bye kids. To hear more beautiful tales of culture, subscribe to our channel. Namaste Nani. On a good summer evening, kids giggle on the woven mat, eyes wide with anticipation to hear stories. Today, children, we will hear the story of Ant and the Grasshopper. One summer's day in a field, a grasshopper was hopping about, chirping and singing to its heart's content. He saw an ant passing by him. Busy tiny ant, strong and brave with great effort, carried Big Nut to its hidden cave. Why don't you come and chat with me? Asked the grasshopper. Instead of toiling your life away? I am helping to store up food for the winter. Said the ant. And I recommend you to do the same. Why bother about winter? Said the grasshopper. We have got plenty of food at present. But the ant went on its way and continued its toil. When winter came, everything was covered with snow. The grasshopper, who wasted its time for short joy, found itself dying of hunger during winters. While it saw the ants enjoying and distributing corn and grain every day they had collected in summer, then the grasshopper, full of regret, asked the ants for help and also learned his lesson. So kids always think, do you tend to finish all your work and then relax, or do you relax first and procrastinate about work? So kids. Work today so you can reap the benefits tomorrow. Nani ji, Nani ji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today, children, let me tell you a story of a clever monkey and his adventurous escape plan. In a green forest near a river, there lived a monkey. In that river. A large crocodile couple resided. One day, the wife crocodile saw the monkey, and she really wanted to have its heart to eat. As she heard that the heart of a monkey is very tasty, she sweetly asked her husband to bring her monkey's heart to eat. Unwillingly, the crocodile devised a plan and assured his wife that he would get her the heart. Later that day. When the monkey went to the river, the crocodile swam up to him and told him about delicious fruits on the other side of the river. Curious, the monkey asked him how to get across the deep river. The clever crocodile suggested giving the monkey a ride on his back, and the monkey agreed. As they moved into the river, the monkey started to feel nervous. Suddenly. The crocodile dumped the monkey into the water, revealing his wife's evil plan. The monkey did not panic and thought of a clever lie. He said, 
Wait, if our hearts were inside us when we jump, they'd break. We keep them on trees. The curious crocodile asked on which tree their hearts were kept. Seizing the opportunity, the monkey pointed to a fig tree on the riverbank, claiming their hearts hung there. Monkey said, Take me there and I'll show you my heart. The husband crocodile agreed not to harm the monkey if he showed him his heart on the tree. Cunningly, the monkey led the crocodile back to the riverbank. Returning to the riverbank, the monkey climbed the fig tree, leaving the crocodile tricked. The monkey mocked the crocodile for falling for his trick. You thought creatures keep their hearts on trees, Link. I've outsmarted you. I, I don't need your fruits. Go away, you crocodile Huh? Disheartened, the crocodile returned to his wife, empty-handed and full of regret. So kids, no matter how tough the things get, don't freak out, even when it feels like everything's going wrong. Remember to stay calm and clear-headed. Think smart. Every problem has a solution. You just got to be clever and calm to find it. On a good summer evening, kids giggle on the woven mat, eyes wide with anticipation to hear stories. Today, children, we will hear the story of the milkmaid and her pail. Minty, the milkmaid, was going to the market carrying milk in a pail on her head. As she went along, she began calculating what she would do with the money she would get for the milk. She thought, I'll buy some fowls from Farmer Brown. And they will lay eggs each morning, which I will sell to the parson's wife. With the money that I get from the sale of these eggs, I'll buy myself a new dimity frock and a chip hat. And when I go to the market, won't all the young men come up and speak to me? Polly Shaw will be so jealous, but I don't care. As she spoke that, she tossed her head back and the pail fell off it and all the milk was spilt. Disheartened, Minty sat amidst the spilled milk. So kids, our life is all about the unexpected twists and turns. So do not count your chickens before they are hatched. Bye bye kids. To hear more beautiful tales of culture, subscribe to our channel. Namaste Nani. Nani ji, Nani ji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today children, Let's hear the story of a man who could turn things into gold. Once upon a time there was a king named Midas. Midas was a wealthy king who owned several palaces and his kingdom's treasures were full of gold. But most of all, he treasured and loved his daughter. One day, Midas found an angel in need of help. He helped her and in return she agreed to grant him a wish. Midas wished that everything he touched would turn into gold. The angel granted his wish. Midas's excitement knew no bounds. On the way home, he touched rocks and plants, and they magically turned into gold. An overjoyed Midas reached home. In his excitement, Midas hugged his daughter, and she instantly turned into a golden statue. Midas could not believe what he saw before his eyes. He was devastated and started crying out loud, holding and hugging his daughter's statue. Midas went back to where he'd found the angel and requested her to take his wish back. The angel, realizing that Midas had learned his lesson, agreed and let him go back. Upon coming back, Midas had no sorrows about losing his power. He was rather glad to find his daughter back with him, happily playing around. So children, all the gold and riches in the world are nothing, compared to a life fulfilled with contentment and love. On a good summer evening, 
kids giggle on the woven mat, eyes wide with anticipation to hear stories. Today, children, we will hear the story about a lonely elephant. An elephant walked through the forest looking for friends. He saw a monkey and asked, Can we be friends, monkey? The monkey quickly replied, You are big and can't swing on trees like I do, so I cannot be your friend. Deflated, the elephant continued to search and stumbled across a rabbit. He asked him, Can we be friends, rabbit? The rabbit looked at the elephant and replied, You are too big to fit inside my burrow. You cannot be my friend. The elephant continued until he met a frog. He asked, Will you be my friend, frog? The frog replied, You are too big and heavy. You cannot jump like me. I am sorry, but you can't be my friend. The elephant continued to ask the animals he met on his way, but always received the same reply. The following day, the elephant saw all the forest animals run in fear. He stopped a bear to ask what was happening. He was told that the tiger was attacking all the small animals. The elephant wanted to save the other animals, so he went to the tiger and said, Leave my friends alone, please. Do not eat them. The tiger didn't listen. He merely told the elephant to mind his own business. Seeing no other way, the elephant kicked the tiger and scared him away. After hearing the brave tale, all the other animals agreed to be his friend. So kids, true friendship is not defined by size, appearance or abilities. It is the willingness to stand up for others in times of need that makes one a real friend. Embrace the differences among us, for it is through acceptance and unity that true friendship emerges. Bye bye kids. To hear more beautiful tales of culture, subscribe to our channel. Namaste Nani. Nani ji, Nani ji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today, children, let's hear the story of the blue jackal. There once was an adventurous jackal who frequently strayed into the village looking for food. However, he had to stay cautious of the many dogs that were there in the village. One day, while in the village, the jackal heard the dogs barking. He turned around to find them running towards him. Scared, the jackal started running away. As he ran, he tumbled into a tub of blue dye. The dogs could not see him, and they ran the other way. Now the jackal was completely blue from head to toe. He appeared very different from any other animal. The jackal was pleased, as no one would be able to recognize him, and he could easily fool anyone in the jungle. Just like he had thought, everyone in the jungle was surprised to see such an unusual animal. The small animals, the lion and the tiger, all asked who he was and who had sent him. I have been sent by God himself to look after you. I will now be the king of the jungle, said the jackal. The lion protested, saying that he had always been the king of the forest. From now on, that must change, and all of you must serve me, the jackal remarked. Some animals, like the tiger, protested and asked what would happen if they didn't obey him. He replied saying that God would destroy the entire jungle. Scared for their lives and their jungle, the animals asked the blue jackal what he would like them to do. Bring me lots of food, said the blue jackal promptly. The animals quickly scurried and returned with lots of food for the jackal. He told them that they had to serve him fresh food every day. He even threw out the pack of jackals from the forest because he knew that they could identify him someday. The blue jackal was very happy with himself for fooling the entire forest and was happy to be away from the village dogs. One day the band pack of jackals was walking around the forest and howling loudly. 
the blue jackal began howling out of habit too. The jackal was immediately recognized by the other animals who chased him out of the jungle. The other jackals never accepted him, for he had refused to be one of them. He was left as a permanent outcast, left alone and rejected. So children, no matter what the circumstance, never ever be pretentious and become someone you are not. On a good summer evening, kids giggle on the woven mat, eyes wide with anticipation to hear stories. Today, children, we will hear the story of Scars of Speech. Once there was a little boy who had problems controlling his anger. When he got angry, he would say the first thing that came to mind, even if it affected people. One day, his father gifted him a hammer and a bundle of nails. His father then said, Whenever you get mad, hammer a nail into the backyard fence. The boy used up half of his nails in the first few days. Over the following weeks, he used up fewer nails until his temper was under control. The father then asked the young boy to remove a nail for each day he didn't lose his temper. On the day when the boy had removed his last nail, his father told him, You have done good, boy. Can you see the holes in the wall? The fence is never going to be the same. Likewise, when you say mean things in anger, you'll leave a scar. So kids, anger is like a knife, one of the most dangerous weapons. So when you use it, the wounds will heal, but the scars will remain the same. Bye bye kids. To hear more beautiful tales of culture, subscribe to our channel, Namaste Nani. On a good summer evening, kids giggle on the woven mat, eyes wide with anticipation to hear stories. Today, children, we will hear the story of a proud rose. Once upon a time, in a desert far away, there was a rose who was so proud of its beautiful looks. Its only complaint was that it was growing next to an ugly cactus. Every day, the beautiful rose would insult and mock the cactus about his looks, all while the cactus remained quiet. All the other plants nearby tried to make the rose see sense, but it was too swayed by her own looks. One scorching summer, the desert became dry, and there was no water left for the plants. The rose quickly began to wilt. Its beautiful petals dried up, losing their lush color. When it looked towards the cactus, it saw a sparrow dip his beak into the cactus to drink some water. Though ashamed, the rose asked the cactus if it could have some water. The kind cactus readily agreed, helping them both through the tough summer as friends. From then on, the rose understood that beauty isn't just about looks, but also about kindness and being there for each other. It never teased the cactus again, and their garden blossomed with their newfound friendship. So kids, true beauty doesn't lie just in looks, but in being kind and helping others, especially when they need it most. On a good summer evening, kids giggle on the woven mat, Eyes wide with anticipation to hear stories. Today, children, we will hear the story of Two Friends in the Flower Pot. In a bustling town, there were two friends, Timmy and Danny. They were inseparable, playing games and having fun every day. One day, while playing the game, they accidentally knocked over Lizzie's expensive flower pot. Scared of getting into trouble, they ran away and blamed each other for the mishap. Timmy said it was Danny's fault, and Danny said it was Timmy's fault. Their argument turned into a big fight, and they stopped talking to each other. They both felt guilty about lying, and decided to tell the truth to Lizzie. When they confessed, 
Lizzie forgave them and appreciated their honesty. Feeling relieved, Timmy and Danny apologized to each other and promised never to lie again. They learned that honesty is the best policy and that true friends stick together no matter what. From that day on, Timmy and Danny's friendship became even stronger, built on trust and honesty. So kids, always remember that lying only causes trouble, but being truthful always brings you happiness. Bye bye kids. To hear more beautiful tales of culture, subscribe to our channel. Namaste Nani. On a good summer evening, kids giggle on the woven mat, eyes wide with anticipation to hear stories. Today, children, we will hear the story of a thirsty crow. It is a hot summer evening. A thirsty crow is looking for water. It flies far and wide, but there is not a drop in sight. At last, he finds a jug of water near a cottage. But alas, the neck of the jug is too narrow. The thirsty crow tries and tries, but he cannot reach the water. I will die of thirst if I do not drink this water. He says to himself. The crow thinks hard for some time and suddenly sees a few pebbles on the ground. Finally, an idea strikes him. One by one, he picks the pebbles with his beak and drops them into the jug. Slowly, the water level rises as the crow drops more and more pebbles. The crow drinks the water to his heart's content and flies away happily. So kids, hard work and smart work always pay off. Naniji, Naniji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today, children, let's hear the story about making differences. The story of a little girl named Advita. There once was a girl named Advita who loved taking long walks on the seashore. On the seashore, thousands of starfishes used to lay washed up by the strong and powerful waves of the sea. On every walk, Advita would occasionally bend down to pick up a starfish and throw it back into the open sea. A man living by the shore saw Advita's activities often. Perplexed by her actions, he walked up to her one evening and said, there are thousands of starfishes washed onto this shore on a daily basis. You picking up and throwing a few back makes no difference. Advita looked back calmly at the man. She smiled and bent down to pick up a starfish, pressed it lovingly and gently, pushed it back into the water. She turned back to the man with a gentle smile. It made a difference to that one. So kids, always remember that even our small actions can have a huge impact on others' lives. So it's important to be kind always. Naniji, Naniji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today, children, let me tell you a story of greed and selfishness. There was a very greedy and selfish man whose only desire was to have lots and lots of money. He never wished to share anything with others and also paid very low wages to people that worked for him. It so happened that one day a small bag that belonged to him was missing. The bag had 50 gold coins in it. The man searched high and low for the bag but could not find it. His friends and neighbors also joined in the search but all their efforts were in vain. After a couple of days, the daughter of a worker working for the man found the bag. She told her father about it. Her father identified the bag as the one that was missing and immediately decided to take it to his master. He gave the bag back to his master and asked him to check whether the bag had 50 gold coins. 
The man was exultant to get the coins back, but he decided to play a trick. He shouted at his worker, There were 75 gold coins in this bag, but you gave me only 50. Where are the other coins? You have stolen them. The worker was shocked to hear this and pleaded his innocence. Selfish and greedy, the man did not accept the worker's story and decided to take the issue to court. The judge heard both sides. He questioned the worker and his daughter about the number of coins they had found in the bag. And they assured him it was only 50. The judge then cross-examined the man who replied Yes, my lord. I had 75 gold coins in my bag and they gave me only 50. Hence, it is quite obvious that they have stolen 25 coins. The judge then asked, Are you sure your bag had 75 coins? The man nodded vigorously. The judge then made his judgment. Since this man lost a bag of 75 gold coins, and the bag found by the girl had only 50 coins, it is obvious that the bag that was found does not belong to him. It was lost by someone else. Nothing can be done in this case until anyone finds a bag of 75 gold coins, as there are no complaints about the loss of 50 coins. I order that the 50 gold coins be given to the girl and her father as a token of appreciation for their honesty. Remember kids, honesty will always be rewarded and greed punished. Naniji Naniji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today, children, let's hear the story of the pencil maker's lesson. Having completed his latest piece, the pencil maker took it aside just before putting the pencil into the box. There are five things you need to know, he told the pencil, before I send you out into the world. Always remember them and never forget and you will become the best pencil you can be. You will be able to do many great things, but only if you allow yourself to be held in someone's hand. You will experience a painful sharpening from time to time, but you'll need it to become a better pencil. You will be able to correct any mistakes you might make. The most important part of you will always be what's inside. On every surface you are used on, you must leave your mark. No matter what the condition, you must continue to write. The pencil understood and promised to remember and went into the box with purpose in its heart. Now replacing the pencil with you, if you remember these lessons and never forget them, you will become the best person you can be. You will be able to do many great things but only if you allow yourself to be held in God's hand and allow other human beings to access you for the many gifts you possess. You will experience a painful sharpening from time to time by going through various problems in life, but you'll need it to become a stronger and better person. You will be able to correct any mistakes you might make, so do not be afraid of making mistakes. The most important part of you will always be what's on the inside. What you think and feel is more important than how you look. On every surface you walk through, you must leave your mark. No matter what the situation, you must continue to do your duties. Leave your legacy when you leave this world. Remember kids, you can choose to be shaped by your life, or you can choose to shape your life. Naniji, Naniji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today, children, let's hear the story of a greedy well swap. Once, in a tiny village, there was a man named Vishu who owned a big well, but he was so selfish that he never allowed the other villagers to use the water from his well. Devastated from his selfishness, Vishu's neighbor went to the chief of the village. On hearing this, the chief felt very unhappy because of what Vishu was doing. So, they thought of a plan to purchase the well from Vishu. 
That man went to Vishu and said, Vishu, I would like to purchase this well of yours. Because Vishu loved money, he sold the well. But he was quite smart too. The very next day, when the man came with his bucket to get water, Vishu said, Hey man, you bought the well and not the water, so you are not allowed to fetch the water from this well. The chief was riding his horse, and when he noticed what was happening, he steered his horse over and said, Listen, Vishu, since this man had bought the well now, you cannot keep your water in his well. Vishu understood about the chief's plan and apologized for his misdeeds. So, kids, sharing and apologizing can make things better for everyone. Naniji, Naniji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today, children, let's hear the story of the butterfly in the cocoon. Children, do you know that the beautiful and colorful butterfly begins its life as a not-so-pretty worm we call the caterpillar? One day, a man saw a cocoon in the garden beside his home. He loved butterflies and was amazed by the wonderful combination of colors on their wings. He saw the cocoon with a tiny opening. It meant that the butterfly was trying to make its way out into the world. He watched over the cocoon for hours, watching the butterfly struggling to break the shell. Even after several hours of continuous attempts, it seemed there was no progress, even though the butterfly was trying its best. The man, driven by his love for butterflies, decided to assist this tiny creature. He grabbed a pair of scissors and carefully adjusted the cocoon, making the opening bigger for the butterfly to come out. The butterfly emerged out of the cocoon without any more struggle. Unfortunately, the butterfly looked no longer beautiful and had a swollen body with small and faded wings. The man was happy that he had made the butterfly come out of the cocoon without any more struggles. He continued to watch the butterfly excited to see it fly with its beautiful wings. He thought that at any moment the butterfly would spread its wings, reduce its body size and gracefully take off with its colorful wings. Unfortunately, neither did the wings expand nor did the swollen body of the butterfly shrink. The butterfly just crawled around with withered wings and a huge body. It was never able to fly. The man wanted to help, but he didn't know that the butterfly needs struggles to become beautiful with strong wings. The continuous effort from the butterfly to come out of its cocoon would help its wings develop. Only then, the butterfly's body would become lighter and smaller, and the wings would be beautiful and large. This story teaches us about the intricate balance present in nature. The man tried to mold the natural course of things and ended up leaving them worse off. Similarly, we need to learn to let the nature take its course and how to live in harmony with nature and its ways. Remember kids, if we do not undergo any struggle, we won't be able to fly. Struggle makes us shine. Naniji, Naniji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today, children, let's hear the beautiful Baal Katha of the playful spirit of Ganesh, Baal Ganesh Parikrama. Once upon a time, in the great mountain of Kailash, a brotherly challenge took place between Ganesh and Kartike. It was decided thus that whosoever would be able to circumambulate the world thrice first would be adjudged the winner. Kartike quickly called upon his mystical ride, Mayur the Peacock, and took off to complete his three revolutions around the world, whilst Ganesh respectfully stood in his place. Then, Ganesh started walking around in circles around Shivji and Ma Parvati. Ganesh completed three revolutions around his parents and calmly stood back in his place. 
He was shortly after joined by Kartike, who had just completed his three revolutions around the world. Ha! You haven't even moved yet, and I have already completed the three revolutions. Clearly I got the better of you in this challenge, brother. Ganesh simply folded his hands in a respectful namaste towards their parents, and Kalmi spoke. I have already completed the challenge. You see, for me my whole world is covered in the patronage and shelter of my parents. All the gods and the Devi Mahadev themselves were elated to hear of this graceful wit that Ganesh had demonstrated. Lord Shiv lovingly hugged his two sons and blessed them. So, kids, Mahadev adorned Ganesh with the title of Pratham Puja, the one who'll always be worshipped foremost. Naniji, Naniji, it's story time. What will you tell us today? Today, children, let's hear the story about heaven and hell. Once upon a time, a warrior was wandering through the Himalayan forests, somewhere in the northern parts of India. He came across a meditating old and feeble guru. The warrior saw the meditative guru and walked up to him. Ah, wise one. I have a burning curiosity to understand something. Riddle me this. The guru remained unaffected, as if he'd heard nothing. The warrior could not bear this insulting neglection from the guru. He closened up and roared again. I want to understand that what it is that heaven is, and how is it different from hell? The guru opened his eyes calmly and looked up to the giant rocky figure that had disturbed his meditation. But more than irritation, there was a sense of sympathy. In the Guru's eyes, the warrior's pride could not take this. I asked you the difference between heaven and hell. Tell me this, O oh Guru. The Guru smiled, as if insultingly and blatantly replied, You? You want to understand the difference between heaven and earth? You whose face smirks of ugliness, whose eyes are but mere beads that feel light yet see nothing, who smells of repulsion, who creates a ruckus wherever he goes, whose mere presence is enough to disgust the joy out of any living soul. You want to know the difference between heaven and earth, huh? As if you'd understand it. The warrior raged furiously. In his angered fury, he instinctively pulled out his sword and raised it to slash off the guru's head and end this parade of insults altogether, when his warrior's instincts were interrupted by a calm and kind voice. This is... Hell. The warrior stood there, frozen, and his eyes and mind bent in utter surprise. Here is an old sage who had put his very life on the line to just answer a life's curiosity of a random passerby, and I... I was about to slay this wise soul. He thought to himself, as he slowly began realizing the preposterous gesture he'd frozen into. The warrior calmed down, and felt nothing but utterly respectful as he folded his hands and bowed down to the feet of this ocean of calmness. He saw before him in the form of this guru. The guru raised his hand in blessing. And this is heaven. So kids, in the calmness and wisdom of a guru's feet, we experience what's referred to as heaven. And in our anger, self-centeredness, and in not being in control of ourselves, are we nearest to what they call hell?